They watch Cat Williams go off on everybody, and you sat there and ate all that shit up. But they talk about saying. When they got mad at me. Yeah, of course, nigga, because you out there letting them say Earthquake can't read. Well, I mean, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gave him a script, so I don't know if he can or not. You, just, hey, you, said, my, you just said, interview over. I'm getting out of here. You just did like that, but you was sitting back saying, ooh, nigga, we about to get Quake, this shit. Quake, my, Quake, first of all, Quake, my guy. Yeah. Like I said, I, yeah. some guys I know, like I know Quake. Quake mm -hmm. and I have conversation. Oh, yeah. I talk to Quake. Quake and I have gone to dinner together. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the people that he mentioned, I felt that he was retorting what they said. Ricky said that. He had the role of Money Mike, and he was setting that straight. I asked said, did he steal the joke? Because that was reported. Said said he didn't, Rick, and, and, and Cass. But the nigga had receipts. <laughs> 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 they showed the same joke. And this is the thing. This is the thing, man. This is, this is in the defense of said. He from my hometown. I love said. And, uh, I mean, dude, you know, sometimes you do a joke and you feel it. I ain't never stole no. I don't have to get no joke because my life is is hilarious. Right. I, I can write shit. I can go up and talk about. So I elaborate on the comedian's joke that he did on stage. Mm -hmm. Like Chris Tucker was on stage last night at the Sandbag show, and I said, "Boy, he did talking about he had to ride and coach because he ain't got the money no more." He said he had his son put pull out a knife and keep her safe back here, <laughs> you know, because he was scared. <laughs> and I said, "Ooh, I wish I could have went up behind her because I would have rode off that joke." I said, "Yeah, I was on that same plane with Chris Tucker." I was sitting in first class. I got a lot of miles. And I, <laughs> and I looked behind the curtain. I said, hey, Chris, good to see you, nigga. I'm watching Rush Hour on the movie. Y'all like, <laughs> don't get movies back there. But you did a real good job with that. I shut the curtain. <laughs> Let me eat, nigga. Me <laughs> but, 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 but comedy is not yours to own. Right. It's yours to create. Right. And sometimes I had a white boy steal a joke of mine. Uh, I don't even know who he is. And he, he, I don't know who he is and he know he got it from me because he, white comics, black comics, they see, they know me. They, I'm, I'm on everything. So when you watch my special, my first special, Can a Brother Get Some Love? I did a joke about a dude who been my father. He was, I found out he wasn't my dad. He, he, he was, he, uh, and when I got to meet him, you know, I was like, damn, he, he was a professional bodybuilder. I said, we got that in a like, you know, he built his body one way. I built mine with hamburger, <laughs> you know, right. and then I said, but I seen a nigga in that bikini. I said, I don't know. Me, my daddy, though, I'm gonna do a blood test because that nigga got a lot of dick on him. I, 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 I ain't inherit none of that dick. I said, shit, I must take dick after my mama, you know. So, so this white comedian did it. Then an NFL player did it. Uh, he did it on the talk show. He did the joke, and nigga never gave me no credit right. for the joke, you know. But I, you know, even Tyler Perry did a joke. That was of mine. He he was at the airport. He was a, it was witness locate a witness relocation witness program whatever right. the movie he did, and I you know he get mad whatever. But I know he did it because he took the trailer off because somebody you know and it ain't he ain't no comedian comedian. He's right. an actor, a writer, a creator. He's very talented. I did a movie with him. So. But somebody probably wrote the joke because he was up there and he was, they was in the lines of the airport and they said, ma'am, uh, for security reasons, you got to take your shoes off. We got to check your shoes. He said, take my shoes off. He said, who going to put them back on? That's my joke. I did that on my special. Right. And that, my 30 minute special on Comedy Central. Right. I, that's one of my main jokes. You right. know, I said, I ain't got no bombs in my shoes. I said, if I had bombs in my shoes, as heavy as I am, as soon as I put them on, this shit is going to explode. <laughs> you know? Right. And that's the joke, you know? Right. So, but, I mean, when it comes down to that, you know, when Cat was jumping on, I said, Nikki, you make a hundred thousand dollars a fucking show, motherfucker. You worried about the pussy ass joke you did back in Comic View? Mm -hmm. I love Cat. Cat is, I, I, I knew Cat when he was Cat in the Hat and he, he, we was in, uh, Stockton, he may have said he alive, but he know who I am. I remember back before, right before, you know, before, way before he was famous, we were doing tours with Rick Sullivan up here in, in, uh, in, uh, in Oakland. We did all of, uh, what's, what's it called up there? We did, we did Stockton. We did, uh, the, all the, all the North, Northern California joints and, uh, Fred's know all that. And, you know, and Cat was very talented. He was funny. You know, he was a good dude. He was always quiet. But he was funny. He did his thing. But when he got on, when he blew up on that uh, Money Mike yeah. on, on Friday, yes. I said, that nigga about to be a superstar. 
Because that money, Mike, he, and he embellished every character that some bitch do. That some bitch, he eats them characters up. Yes. Money, Mike, he eat it and he rolled, he turned. And that's why, you know, Rudy Ray Moore mm -hmm. told me something way back. He said, use what you got. You fat, tell about your fat. Use everything you got. And Cat took that pimp. Roll and metamorphosize that some bitch into a career. You remember he had the pimp oddity, all that yeah, shit. Yeah. He made he pimp made chronicles. Pimp chronicles. Yeah, pimp chronicles. I mean, he 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 made so much out of that. It became he became the hottest, the most one of the most prevalent comedians in the world because he used it. That's called milking your career. Okay. And what he did with that. You know, was powerful. And then when he was on my wife and kids and he played, he played, uh, <laughs> Damon Wayne's nemesis, man, this dude funny. He's yeah. so talented. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I, and then the painful thing, I, I think that he think that he's not, he doesn't get all that he deserve. And he, and I, I, and I understand because how hard he goes and he is very smart and very talented but me him relishing off of a, one little joke cat i mean uh Sid Sid. back then fuck that did you know that the comedians you've been in this thing 30 plus years lavelle did you know comedians behind the scene felt this way about each other uh, yeah i mean we human beings. I mean, I'm sure all you ever got beefs and the more, you know, the shameful thing about it is that What's bothers that? me about it. Like I said before, Cat made, he made, he, he got, he got, the, he got that real money. Right. And I'm going to tell you something before I move on with that. Get some more comfortable furniture up in here. You look so uncomfortable. I'm, I'm comfortable. Trying, See, I'm trying, not trying to get up. You trying to play on this part of this shit. You no, I'm bust not. your knee on that damn. No, thing. I, no, I, I kicked it. No, I hit my knee. I'm sorry, I'm uh, uh, no, no, I know, but it, it, I, I thought it you was. You ain't comfortable. Like, you can scoot back. Scoot back and get it, comfortable it, like me. I, I was trying to, I was going to do a, a leg. Yeah, I do like, that right there. Yeah, see? Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know I could do you that. You can do whatever you're comfortable. Uh, all right. Okay. And we're going to blame it. We're going to blame it on the Laporteers. <laughs> 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 yeah, but look, but but yeah, but when I say that, it's like when we all in the soup and just we ain't got no money, and it ain't we ain't got you see these opportunities over here. We normal folks, cause you see when people ain't famous no more, how friendly they is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But, but when they famous, they are walk around. They give you the yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, why, why, why did, did, did it somebody, have to take that? Yeah, why, why you had to lose it to be who you was before? Just be you. I mean, I don't give a fuck what producers talk about movies. That's, that's, you just getting that money. Right. Cause I mean, I, I've been, I've been, I mean, I've been in the game. I, I've been around the world. I didn't see it all. I didn't had do all kind of opportunities. I ain't never had the big money, but I always wedged myself in the game. Somebody say I'm underrated. You're alive. I've been kicking it. I done a lot of shit. I'm rated pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, and I like the the way I'm flying. I, I don't have to worry worry about shit and try to stay on somebody's path. I'm I'm me. But I, yes, comedians always had, you know, and I think the beef comes from this success over here, this success over here. That's when they become beef. Before they make it, they cool or they're fighting the street. I mean, we, you know, everybody ain't going to get along. Everybody that. But everybody yeah. ain't going to make it either, LaVell. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's in anything. Right. I mean, this depends on what you consider making it. Well, you could, you know, I'm making it. Well, I mean, you look like, I mean, there are some people like, okay, the comedy, like you said, you do 200 shows a year, you make great money. But a lot of times people look and they see where well, they see, well, Pryor and they see Cosby and they see uh, Pryor and they see Kevin Hart and they see Mike Epps and they see so many of these other comedians. Not only do what did stand up, you see the Adam Sandler's and you see uh, the Ray Romano's and you see the Seinfeld that had TV shows. They was like, well, why didn't I get? Why didn't I get that? Yeah, but you can't sit up and ask why. You just gotta find your world. I, I don't think. I don't think their success ain't my success. Because, right. But we don't know what kind of pain come with that pleasure. Right. You understand? Because I know. I know the backgrounds on some of that money. Mm -hmm. And I and I know some of some of them really be working harder than they make it. You understand? Right. You don't, you, you can't, you can't always say, ooh, I mean, when I, you know, 
I remember back <laughs> when I see some famous women yeah, and they be with somebody like Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. I said, like, man, I mean, that's a lucky dude, boy. He got mm-hmm. Jada Pinkett, blah, blah, blah. He's making moves. And then we see their life just implode. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't know. Yeah. What's really what's going, going on, on behind the scenes? You don't really know. You thinking that he got a, this perfect life, and it's not what you think. Mm-hmm. And my and the thing about it, like comedians see my life, and then they they would think they they love it. But I learned to be grateful, right, for, for what, what God have. give me, and the guy and He blesses me to go to them other plateaus. Because I mean, I ain't done. I mean, I'm gonna get my real moments in the sun. I'm gonna got, got some more opportunities gonna come. But right now, I don't stress on it no more. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed because I I can I can go pretty much anywhere and get the work, right. And I and people and my persona and my personality mm-hmm. is so. Admirable, I think that a person who can't stand me or hate me, that person that know me won't believe him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like, let's say, you know, somebody you come up to come up to you, and, you know, and say something about one of your friends. Man, you know that motherfucker, he an asshole. Hold on, man. What you mean? He a good dude. Right. Man, I can't believe. It. Oh, you don't know him like I know. I said, nigga, I've been knowing him all my life. He a good dude. You ain't gonna never believe what they say. Because you know him and, and the way he carried himself with you. Right. You know, and that's how you should live your life. Right. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before to something.